Starship static fires are shaping up pretty fast out there at the orbital launch mount. We're going to look at it in this video because it's time for another Starbase summary. Kicking it off, there is that static fire adapter we have been keeping an eye on. You've seen them cut lots of parts off of it. You've seen them weld new parts, uh, clamps, adapters braces, that sort of stuff to it. And it seems like sooner rather than later, we're going to see this adapter fly up and land on the orbital launch mount itself in preparation for putting a ship up there. If you're not entirely clued in on what's going on, remember that huge explosion out at Massey's caused massive damage to the Starship static fire uh, equipment out there, and they can no longer use the Massey's test site to test Starships. So what they are doing here in these shots are actually uh, creating sort of an adapter where they'll be able to take a star ship and put it directly on the orbital launch mount so that they can do static fire testing while the repairs at Massey's, which are expected to take months, are completed. So we're going to see a lot of different stuff over here around the bottom of the pad. We've seen welding, grinding, cutting. Do you see it? The color's a little bit off, um, contrast a little off, but you see the welded triangle shapes there. I guess they're trapezoids or something. Um, but those look like they're going to go on there as bracing for the sides of uh, some of the plumbing, I believe. A little bit of a shot of orbital pad one there. Backlighting makes life a little difficult, but over on the left-hand side, you can see that booster quick disconnect shielding and plate. And they have been doing a ton of work on that. Uh, here's somebody coming up out of the access hatch. That's not the plate. The plate's over on the left-hand side that we'll look at here. But they've been doing a ton of work there to prepare to plug a ship into that thing. There's an insulated tank over at the tank farm. Not sure. I could, it's got some scaffolding around it, so they're doing some work on it. But I'm not sure entirely what uh, that was for. There's the orbital tank farm with all of those big pumps and valves and all that sort of stuff. Those are some massive motors on those, by the way. Like, those have to flow a significant volume of propellant, uh, whether it's methane, liquid oxygen, you see them all around the tank farm. They have to flow a lot. You don't want to sit there and spend 10 hours fueling the Starship. But they're continuing to work around there. Is that an explosives label in the background? That octagonal one... It's a hazard explosives label, if I'm not mistaken. This is sweeping at the tank farm. Either that is a leak that is moving up a pipe, or it is a cab of a sweeper somewhere. There it is. Jeez. How'd you like... I need, a, I need that for my computer desk, actually. There is quite a bit of... You know back behind your monitor... I don't know. Maybe not everybody has monitors. A lot of people using laptops these days, I guess. Uh, but you know how there's all this dust behind your monitor? You should clean that on an occasion. Do that today. Today's a good day to clean out the dust from your computer desk. I'll do it too. There's a production site and some birds there. Line of uh, cement trucks, concrete trucks, and that pile drilling we've been seeing. Those blue, big blue pile drillers, you can see they're actually spinning right there. Look at that. Oh, it's advancing forward and spinning. Well, no kidding. That's what it would do. If it was drilling, it would have to spin in advance. Well, all right, whatever. I didn't think we would see it at this level of detail uh, there as they drill those massive pilings for the Gigabay. It's a rebar cage. Oh, yeah, there you go. It looks like a ladder, but it's like it's probably like a rebar uh, cylinder made out of rebar. There it goes. Flying along, and they drill those massive holes, and they put those rebar cages down in there, and they will uh, pump the concrete down into there and fill it up so that they have firm support for the building. Again, the shifting sands of Starbase, you don't want to put a massive building foundation directly on it. If you do, your building will probably start to fold like a taco. Shouldn't do that. You need good support all the way down to bedrock or, or other sorts of load-bearing soils that are not the soft sands on the top. So that's what they're doing here, drilling these things out, flying a cage in, and then putting all of that concrete down in there. Does that actually say concrete on the side of those trucks? Was that a company name? <laughs> all right, hey, it's an RVAC. You can tell because the engine bell is massive. The bell is a little bit hidden behind the fence, but the top, the, the power head, the plumbing of the motor sticks up above the thing. Maybe technically that wasn't quite the power head. It may have been behind the top of the fence, but whatever. Some time lapse work here. You got the crane running around, picking up rebar cages. Are we going to get another rebar cage here? Yeah, it's flying something around, and then it's going to drive around the backhand side. We're going to pull out the massive auger. I think when you get that big, it's an auger. It's not a drill bit anymore. Was it? 
What was the difference between an auger and a drill bit? You know, I don't actually know. I'll have to look that up. I mean, I, I, you heard both things, but I don't know. Well, technically, an auger is this, and a drill bit's that. Huh. That's that's going to be an interesting thing for me to go look up. Maybe in the next video, I'll be able to tell you the difference, or y'all will just tell me down below. That's says Ship 42's Common Dome section. Are we going to get a zoom on that label? Oh, there we go. S42CMN. Yeah. I squinted down to 2010 so that I could read that. Oh, look at that there. Yeah, enhance. Much better. And it's got something on Oh, the owner, like the uh, person in charge of that, I guess. In charge of that part. There's some other parts inside of the Star Factory, header tanks and such. By the way, a common dome, if it's a common dome section, that means that it's a, a, a dome that goes between two tanks, and you have different things on either side of the tank. It's like a single piece that uh, separates two different things. Instead of two domes, one for each tank, and then you have empty space between them, a common dome is just one barrier that separates the, the methane from oxygen or whatever, right? Two different things without having extra material in the tank. You'll say that across space flight because it's a great way to save some mass. Ah, yes. The nose cone on the old nose cone rotisserie. Alright. what are Okay, we clamped in there. This time we're probably going to do some welding, right? We need an electrical circuit or is that an ESD thing? Show me welding. That looks like welding. I like that. You just lean right there. The angle right there is just right. Ship 43's LOX header tank. It's the UFO on the right-hand side. That's not accurate at all because it is neither unidentified nor is it flying. That's just an O. It's an object. Or it's a, it's a S-I-O. It's a sitting identified object. Oh, maybe now it's on a crane. I don't know. Huh. Anyways, it's, it's clearly not a UFO. It's just UFO-shaped. Jack getting us some uh, gratuitous shots here. It really is like nighttime is the time. No, that looks like the place that looks like the orientation. Um, nighttime is the best time to look into these uh, windows here. You know, we talk about this a lot. It's like, oh, should should we take photos through the? Well, they put the windows there, right? And they have the assembly line right there, like they're showing off all of the ships that they have. So clearly, this is in view from the public roadway. Uh, clearly, everything we see in there, it's almost like SpaceX wanted to show off all of the cool work that they're doing. So one day, maybe if like drapes show up <laughs> or something like that, like reflective window tint or something. But moving on down the line, you can see all of those thermal protection system pins, clips on the back of the heat tiles, almost like a styrofoam. They're really lightweight, those heat tiles. You can see a couple heat tiles there. And uh, they have these little metal uh, fixtures, is probably the right terminology, on the back of them. And you sort of click them into place when you attach the thermal protection systems to the ship. I almost said the ships are boosters, but no, you don't need to put any on the boosters. They don't get going fast enough. And you can see a couple TPS tiles over there on the left-hand side. Oh, look at this. Over at pad one, the chopsticks are getting a little bit of uh, calisthenics. you got to move them around a little bit to make sure they don't freeze into place. Hopping over at Massey, as you can see, the crab stand, the static fire stand that took all that massive damage is still there on the right-hand side. Over on the left hand side, booster 18.1, test tank, and the nose cone jail. Here we've got some tanks that we've zoomed in on the middle. It's a lift. Is there anybody on that lift? I don't see anybody up there. There's somebody. There's a, two people standing on that static fire stand. You see on the left-hand side, one worker's got their arm up. They just put it down over on the scaffolding. For a sense of scale, there's how big that thing is. It is not small. A little bit of a closer shot here from Massey's. The crane, the jail. Can't see, couldn't see the stack fire stand in there. I'm going to get a little closer to that booster 18.1 test tank. We don't really see anything going on. We've seen a little bit of cryoactivity, but it's almost like they're flushing out lines or, or pressure testing things for damage or something like that. Uh, haven't seen any actual testing happening at the Massey's test site now. Palm trees and Johnson grass, it looks like. Waving in the wind. Palm tree, singular, there. This material has been sitting for quite a while. This is uh, behind you to your behind right is going to be that Rio West mixed-use development they've been working on. And these pipes have been sort of uh, staged here for quite some time. But they have not finished all the trenching for that. So it'll be interesting to see where those end up. Um, 
Are they going to go further up the road? Do they already put the pipes there, but that's just still the stockpile, and they haven't come to pick them up to use them or anything? In this shot from the side of Highway 4, that's the Rocket Garden on the left-hand side, and the two Mega Bays. Imagine how big the Giga Bay is going to be. Ah, Raptor Center. Look, see see how the plumbing doesn't stick up above the fence? You don't even really notice the engine bell here because it's so small, the nozzle. Um, we know that it's a Raptor moving around, but it's not, uh, it's not one of the big Raptor vacuums. Either Jack is on a really tall surfboard or he sent the drone. No, I don't know, actually. Is this from the... I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, here you go. I have to get my bearings here. Okay, OLM's on the left-hand side of Tower 1, so this is north of the launch site, and this is going to be outside the TFR to the north of the launch site. South Padre Island is behind you from that point of view there. Neat! That was a treat. I did not expect to see that in there. All right, so here's this. Remember when we were talking about all the work on the booster quick disconnect? Here from some of our 24-7 cameras, massive thanks to the SBL Ops for uh, getting us this zoom. But they've installed this frame here, and it looks like this is going to be part of the adapter to uh, pump the propellants from the OLM into the ship. Remember, you can't use the booster quick disconnect plate arm, yada, 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 right? Uh, they don't match. They don't equal up. They're not the same. And so that frame looks like it's the basic framework that they're going to use to install some pipes and plumbing and stuff like that. Oh, look at this. Look at this. So here is another more different frame. And they are literally putting the adapter in there. Look at that. The crane putting it right into position. And those lines probably going to come out the back of the booster quick disconnect and up around the corner and uh, go into the ship at its quick disconnect plate there. Too cool to see all that stuff going on. But that's going to do it for now, y'all. Thank you for watching. My name is John. If you see me down in the comments, it may be DOS. Hey, we are trying to work on the multi-language thing. Uh, YouTube broke it. And then told us they fixed it, and it wasn't fixed. But YouTube uh, has made that functionality stop working for now, but they swear to us that they'll get it fixed. It's just not fixed yet. So as soon as we do, we'll let you know. Appreciate you watching, as always, and we will catch you nerds later.